Hey guys, I just want to go over real quick um, some of these uh, these three PDFs that I put into Module 2. Uh, we're going to be using these three PDFs quite often throughout the rest of the semester. So when I close out Module 2, um, all these PDFs will go into the Resources tab on your Blackboard course, and you can access them from there. The first one I want to go over real quick is the PDF called Auto Trans Technical Terms. Uh, this is just a three page PDF. The first page right here has some abbreviations that are very common uh, in the automatic transmission field. Um, you might want to get used to some of these abbreviations cause, cause, because you're going to see them uh, used throughout the semester. The next two pages are just a glossary of technical terms. Uh, you need to become familiar with these terms as well because these will be used a lot. Uh, as we talk about automatic transmissions, and you need to understand uh, what it is that I'm talking about. So I would suggest that you review this, understand what some of these words mean and what they and you know what they're called. And then as we go through the semester, I'll explain each one of these more in detail. And you always have this to refer back to if you don't know what something is called. The next PDF I want to go over is called the AT Identification Guide PDF. Um, this is a resource on different ways you can identify an automatic transmission or actual tools that you can use in this PDF to help you identify them. Uh, so we'll go through this little first part real quick. Here you see a Chrysler, a Ford, and a GM automatic transmission uh, pan gasket shape and bolt patterns. So and it defines them by front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and then it shows you what the gasket looks like, how many bolts, and the transmission model number. These are good if you're working on something a little bit older, maybe from the mid 2000s or so uh, and earlier. These will apply and be very handy to identify what kind of transmission that you have. Another place that you can identify an automatic tra transmission, you'll see down here is that each transmission should have a tag or a label or something that is put onto the transmission and it'll have some coding and this kind of tells you how um, you know they're typically broken down. You can always use manufacturer resources to confirm whatever information that you find on a tag. Here's another example of a transmission uh, identification tag and it tells you what these numbers mean. Here's another example of a Ford um, they have a metal plate that's riveted right onto it and it gives all their information. So this is really, really handy if you just have an automatic transmission on a bench and you don't know what kind of vehicle it came out of. Uh, you're definitely going to have to be looking on the transmission somewhere or an oil pan to figure out what type of transmission that you're working on. More than likely, what you will encounter out in the field if you're not working in an automatic transmission shop is the vehicle will be in your bay and you'll know exactly what kind of vehicle it is because you have to take the transmission out of it so that cuts down on a lot of the uh, research to try to figure out what you have. Another way that you can identify a transmission is through the VIN that's on the vehicle so if you don't have service information you can put this into Google and it will break it down the VIN for you and you know sometimes tell you the automatic transmission model or the code. Um, here you'll see in this PDF it's just a picture of what a label looks like and sometimes it's even part of the actual cast of the transmission case that's built right into it. Uh, after that on this PDF you'll see uh, all these little charts right here. So this is broken down alphabetically by manufacturer and this goes up through model years of 2006 but it's such a handy resource um, that I, I had to include it. And if you look at one of these, you'll see that you might have to play around to zoom on, on some of these PDFs. I'm sorry about that. I, I tried to fix it, but um, I can probably resize the picture and make it a little bit better. So maybe I'll do that eventually. But for right now, I'm sorry that you have to might, may have to zoom in and out. Um, so anyway, so on here you see Acura, Audi. Um, it gives you the model of the vehicle, the years, the transmission type, the engine type, the transmission model, and then it gives you some remarks over here. So if you have a model year 2006 and earlier, 
Uh, this right here is a great resource to figure out what type of transmission is in a vehicle. The last PDF I want to go over is the Automatic Transmission Internal Parts Overview. Uh, we're definitely going to be using this PDF quite often throughout the whole semester. Um, for right now, I just want you to be looking at this. I want you to review what's in the information. There may or may not be a quiz question uh, or two from something in this PDF, like what a part is called or something like that. Um, so obviously here it tells you a little bit of the explanation of the PDF. It ends with a 4L80 and then it ends with a 4L60. Um, if you want to right now, you can see the differences in the applied components and the oil pumps of the two transmissions, but we will be covering that later. Um, again, I think this PDF is fair game. Uh, I'm not going to ask you a very technical question because there is some technical information in here since we're using it all semester. Uh, but for right now, I, I wouldn't ask you a very technical question. Um, I'll start off with the 4L80. Here's a cross-sectional view. You can see all the different components and how they're laid out in the transmission. Here's another um, breakaway and it labels what everything's called. Here's the planet, some of the planetary gear sets. Here's the bottom two uh, parts of the gear train, torque converter, some clutch packs inside here. You can see how they have friction discs and a metal disc in all of them. Uh, this is just a range reference chart that tells you what's applied and what's not applied or what's holding, what's overrunning as the transmission is shifted into different uh, functions. Here are some basic specifications of that transmission. That's cool to know. Here is a uh, kind of breakaway of the mechanical components, and they actually go together in a line, so that's how they are assembled. Here's color coding over here that tells you what which part is associated with, with what type of function, and they're all labeled. And then as we scroll down, it breaks apart all those applied components. Here's an oil pump. Breaks, takes all those applied components and it goes into a very in-depth detail explanation of the function of it and the description of the actual component itself. So we will be using some of this information later on, but like I said for right now, please just review this PDF and understand what's contained in here. A few more components. Here's a breakaway view, uh, parts listing or exploded view, parts listing of all the parts that are in the entire transmission, and it gives you uh, some nomenclature over here on what those parts are called. Here's for the oil pump, you can see all the different valves and springs and everything that's contained within the oil pump. Same thing with this clutch assembly, um, all the internal components, so these, this would be all the components that are in this PDF broken down to show you what makes them up. So you, like on this center support right here, you can see uh, these sealing rings, the, this big seal right here, this retaining spring, the piston, the snap rings that go into the case, the clutch packs, the pressure plate, the bushings. Um, so this is pretty cool to see. And then here it explains what each one of those uh, parts is called. Here's the valve body, accumulators, parking ball. Uh, here's where the bushing and bearings are, the seals. And now we're into the 4L60. It's a very similar transmission, but this is a lighter duty version. So basically we have the same exact information here. I just don't have the um, individual components for this transmission laid out how I did for the 4L80. And that's because the functions are essentially the same. They just look different or they might act a little bit differently in how they're and how they're applied but the fundamentals are all the same so i'm just gonna not put duplicates of everything in here so now here's uh, the exploded parts view of the entire transmission for the 4l60 the pump you can see how this is a vein pump the other one was a gear and crescent pump but we'll get into that later and so that's it for this pdf okay on to the next thing here we're going to be using service information, in this case we're using all data, to find out the transmission model of a certain vehicle that we that we know. So say we have this 2015 Toyota Corolla that's in our shop for uh, a transmission problem. We can't find a tag or an ID on the transmission because it's you know greased over or damaged or gone or whatever. So how do we figure out what transmission's in here? 
Well, I would go into all data, and uh, I'm, I just put, entered my vehicle, so I'm on the home page. I will click on transmission and drivetrain, and then I will click on automatic transmission slash transaxle. Okay, so here we just see fluid and a torque converter. Um, they don't list any type of components or anything like that, so we may have to search a little bit, but I, I bet you we can find some information. Let's go to general information bulletins and see what's on here. Vehicle slash component identification. Well, that sounds promising, component identification. We're looking to ID the transmission, so I'll click on that. Now let's scroll down and read this uh, service bulletin. So it looks like that it applies to from these years, 2006 to 2014, um, for all these Toyota models. Uh, the Corolla is in there. It's a 2015 Corolla, but this information is valid for this. So there's are telling us some notices. Let's keep, oh, here we go. This looks pretty good right here. So here's the transmission model. Here's the model of the Toyota. Here's the model year, here's the engine, and then the serial number, if we could find that tag, here's an explanation of what that serial number means. So, oh, here's a Corolla, but oh, this is 2006, 2008. So let's scroll down until we find a Corolla that fits into the 2014 year. Oh, 2013. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we see here that 2009-2014 Corolla for the engine 2ZR. And if we look up here, 2015 Toyota Corolla, 1.8 liter, four-cylinder, oh, 2ZR. So that matches the engine code. And this gives us a U34 pound sign, pound sign. So let's see if there's something else down here. Oh, and look at that. So this is just the 2014. And since this is a 2015, I would be more comfortable using just the designated 2014 uh, information rather than the 2009 to 2014 information. Uh, this seems like this would be a better choice. Again, our engine code 2ZR matches up with this up here with our vehicle that's selected. And here's a transmission model, which is K313. Toyota Corolla 2014. So I would be uh, safe to say that this 2015 Corolla that we have in the shop has a K313 uh, automatic transmission in it. So another example of using all data to find the transmission model is I'm working with a 2010 Chevy Cobalt 2.2 liter four cylinder. Uh, again, I'm going to come down to transmission and drivetrain going to click on automatic transmission slash transaxle. Now we have a few more options over here. I'm going to pick this description and operation for components. Oh, it gives us a list. And look at that. Transmission identification information. Click on that. It gives us a picture of the transmission saying that they have a metal identification nameplate attached to the case. So maybe perhaps we were looking in the wrong location. We can go verify if we could find this now. And um, down here it says the Hydromatic 4T45-E transmission. So what it's telling us is that in this 2010 Chevy Cobalt, it has a 4T45E automatic transmission. That is pretty simple. Another piece of service information that you can use is if you go on to your Blackboard course, here I am on A172 homepage. Click on Resources. 
scroll down. Now, if you have Electude, uh, which you should because it's a required textbook for the entire program, you will have an automatic subscription to what's called Modal Logic. It's like all data, but through Electude. So you can click on this link right here in your resources, and that'll take you directly to Modal Logic through Electude. Now, when you're on this page, what you want to do is click on Modal Logic Repair and Diagnostic Data, and then Start Module. Okay, now this brings us to our page right here, and we can go ahead and do the same thing. We can start a new search, or we can pick one of these other vehicles. 